this is the first video for the course of statistics second year and the first topic we're looking at is time series introduction I'll give you a bit more information than usual um, in this video just to make sure we know what we're doing so you should have your worksheet in front of you um, with the same title and the same learning objectives so we're going to do a few things today um, normally we'll just do one or two, but these are time series are kind of a GCSE topic for just normal maths as well, so we don't need to spend a lot of time on the introduction part of them. So if you look on your worksheet, the first thing you'll see under the learning objectives is the definition. Um, and a time series graph is, and in a minute I'll tell you, and it's your responsibility then to write that in. I strongly encourage you to use maybe specific colours whenever we're doing definitions. There are a lot of definitions in this course that you're expected to know. And um, yeah, if, you, if you've got a number of colours, I would recommend pausing the video now and, and getting those together. Okay, so we're gonna go through the video now. So definition. A time series graph is a line graph with time plotted on the horizontal axes. I'm gonna show you an example. So this is a time series graph. It's a line graph, but on the horizontal axes, you can see this is time, in this case, years. So this is what your definition should say. So a time series graph is a line graph with time plotted on the horizontal axes. And we can see that here. Now what's interesting, um, we're looking at number of air passengers and you can see there's a general trend as you go across the years, the numbers are generally getting bigger. Okay, so as you go across, they're generally getting bigger. But it's a little unusual because unlike a scatter graph where you just draw a line of first foot, you're literally joining these all up like a mountain range. And you might notice there are several points for each year. And what that will mean is they're either taking it each month or each three months, that's called a quarter, or sometimes just every six months. And so you're looking at um, these data and you're looking at not only the general pattern, but eventually we'll always look at the fact that, oh, OK, at this point or this point or this point or this point, it always seems a bit lower or there seems to be a bit higher as well. It seems to be a repeating mountain range like this, but each time going a little bit higher up the y axis. So it's just things to note at the moment. What we're looking at time series are general trends across the years, but also within each year. Is there a trend and if you're thinking about air passengers when do you think it is that people are going to be air passengers more frequently or what times of year are going to be people be people be flying more and why and when might they be flying less okay an important thing to notice here um, so usually you'll be given the data and you'll do, do little dots at the data points and then join them up with lines um, and as you can see here this is a these are straight lines and they're solid lines, as in they're not dotted. That's because in between, for example, if I took a data point there and the previous one here, there's a straight line joining these two, which is a solid line, because although I haven't taken any data in this period here, time did still pass. And so it is still possible to say um, in all the days and months in between, there were people flying. We're now going to look at a worked example. So what this means is that um, I'm going to go through an example and it there is space on your worksheet for you to take notes and sort of imitate what I'm doing so that later you'll be able to do them yourselves looking at your notes. So it's really important in this case not just to write the answer. The answer isn't really the important part, it's the process so that you can use your notes to learn how to do the process. So it's really important with worked examples to write really good notes. Once again, I recommend doing maybe a different color, like one color for definitions always, one color for worked examples. There, There's also often space for you to do additional notes or anything like that. Please feel free to, don't just limit yourself to the notes that I have suggested. Okay, in this worked example, we're looking at some ice cream being sold over a period of number of years and we've got the quarters and that just means a year is being cut into quarters so every three months they take some data and you might want to think okay what would I expect of ice cream sales 
would expect different times in the year, different amounts of ice cream to be sold, etc. And what we're being asked to do is to draw a time series graph and then to comment on the graph. So we're going to start off looking at drawing a time series graph, so we'll need some graph paper. And we know from the definition of a time series graph that it has time along the horizontal axes, in this case that's quarters, and so we'll do sales up the vertical axes. Okay, so I've labelled up my axes and I'm ready just to plot my data. So it's very simple, for my first piece of data here, I'm just going to go across to the first quarter 3 and then up to 3.6. Remembering each little line here doesn't represent 1 but 2. And once I've done my first one, I'm just going to plot all of them. You'll probably begin to do crosses um, for each of yours, but dots are fine. It's just easier to do dots on this software. So your data should look something like that, either with dots or crosses. And now very simply, we're going to join them up. Now, in this case, because you're taking the data at the first quarter and then at the second quarter, there's no quarters between the first quarter and the second quarter, so you're very free to use a dotted line if you'd like. However, in real life, people often also just use um, an undotted line, like a straight line. But please ensure that you're using a ruler for yours and join it up, kind of like a dot to dot when you're younger. And so your time series graph should look something like that. So we've done part A, we've drawn a time series graph for this data, but we need to comment on this data, see what we notice about it. So hopefully you notice a, a few things. First of all, the sales of the ice cream, they're not the same throughout the year. It's not like every quarter has about the same. There's a clear trend in the quarters, and hopefully you can see that the third quarter seems to always have the highest sales of ice cream. You might see some other um, data, you might see the lowest quarter of each year, what that seems to be. Does that seem to be the first? Does it seem to be the fourth? Well, it seems to be the first, but fourth is quite low too. So if you were writing a comment, it might look something like this. Okay, so I've written out a general statement with a few gaps for you to fill in the quarters based on what you can see. The really um, important thing here is that you're commenting not just on you're commenting on two things. First of all, the general trend. So overall, from halfway through 2013 to the end of 2016, there's a general increase. We're looking at a general increase in ice cream um, sales. We'll look at trends in a minute. But we're also talking about, well, within the year, it's not like 2013 is one number, 2014 one number, and it slowly goes up. Actually, it's much more like a mountain range. There's peaks and troughs and so it's good to comment on which quarters are the highest which are the lowest and in fact to take it to the next level you might want to comment on why that is. Now all this so far is just GCSE maths level and in fact everything in this um, video is GCSE maths level. If we go back to our learning objectives for today we've got draw and interpret line graphs and time series which we've now covered Draw trend lines on time series. We have not yet done that, so let's have a little look at that. So if we first of all just look at our example time series here that we began looking at, we now need to look at how to draw a trend line. A trend line is quite similar to a line of best fit, and we're just looking at the general trend of the data, how it changes over time. Now this will always be a straight line, and you're going to do it, um, you're going to draw your straight line roughly halfway between the highest and lowest point for each year. Now, like with the line of best fit, at this stage, well, although you have now learned how to do the equation of a line of best fit, but at GCSE maths level, you tend to just draw it quite roughly. So this is, again, quite roughly, and we're looking at roughly between the highest and lowest each year. So your trend line here is going to look something like that. Now, when we talk about line of best fit and correlation, we talk about positive and negative or no correlation. Similar with trend lines, but this time just talking about a rising trend, a falling trend, or a level trend. So in this case, is it going to be rising, falling, or level? Clearly it's going to be rising. Rising is positive, it's increasing, and so it's a rising trend. So if I were you, I would maybe draw that line on your graph, on your notes, and just write rising trend. Now if we return to the worked example... Have a go at drawing the trend line on for your worked example and seeing whether it's going to be rising 
or falling. Or in fact, it could be level. Well, if we draw it on, it's going to look something like this. And it's going to be, once again, a rising trend. What does that mean, though? If there's a rising trend here in this graph, well, in context of the question, that kind of goes to links to our final statement, rising trend, because sales of ice cream seem to be generally increasing each year. So it's good to contextualise it. And that is, in fact, the third part of our um, learning objectives. Um, know that it shows the general trend and be able to understand what that means. So we're talking about, in general, more are sold or less are sold over time. So we've now covered also this and this. And now we just need to look at practicing this. So if we say so we've we kind of talked about it briefly and now you're going to practice it. So if you have a look at your worksheet, which should now have some really great notes on it, you're now going to have a go at a couple of questions yourselves. And at the beginning of next lesson, there will be a short progress check based on the topics from this video, just to ensure that you understand them. So it's not enough just to do homework. It must You must get to a stage where you really understand it. So if you're really struggling with any of the questions, the practice questions, then do um, seek help, whether that's from someone else in the class or from myself, in advance of the homework being due, so that when it comes to the lesson, you can do well in the test and demonstrate that you have understood this topic.